This video supported in part by... Playing VR, I tend to sweat. It gives me an edge. The King of Nerds happens to give me an edge, too. Let King of Nerds give you the edge. Bye, King of Nerds. You know, if there's anything I enjoy more than doing product reviews for awesome Gen X grown-up subscribers like you, it might be doing product reviews for awesome Gen X grown-up subscribers like you who actually requested, like these fine folks did, who actually wrote in the comments of a previous video saying they would like me to review Caveman Ninja by My Arcade. Now you might notice that none of them say, John, I think you're gonna love this. They say things like, I would like to see what you think about Caveman Ninja, which gives me a little pause. And so here I am standing in front of you with Caveman Ninja from my arcade. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you for the click and thank you everyone who requested this review. I picked this up years ago when it first came out. I didn't have to go looking for it or finding it anywhere. I bought it. I just never actually reviewed it. Not necessarily a dig on Caveman Ninja or anything wrong with it. This little micro player was just completing my collection because while Caveman Ninja was a title that I enjoyed, it came out of the arcade in 1991, it's not one that I went back to again and again, but it's a later arcade release. So the graphics of Caveman Ninja, also often called Joe and Mac or Joe and Mac Caveman Ninja, depending on the release that you saw, it has much more graphical and auditory fidelity than a lot of the games that I played in the heyday of arcades. Like this is a full 10 years newer, I shouldn't say this. Caveman Ninja, the arcade game that this is supposed to be representing, is a full 10 years newer than games like Pac-Man and Galaga and Dig Dug and stuff like that. So I'm very apprehensive about what they're gonna deliver here. And it's not because I like or dislike the NES or anything, it's that this is probably gonna be even further from the arcade game than many of those other kind of 80s arcade games are. And look, you're putting in an arcade cabinet, you're calling it my arcade, it's not called my NES. So just like before, that's the criteria that I am going to hold this against. All right, so I hope you are ready. We're gonna take a look at this my arcade release of Caveman Ninja. My copy of Caveman Ninja is just about ready to be opened for the first time since I picked it up. Really quick cursory look at the box. And look, it's my arcade. They have a history of really nice presentation, like vibrant box artwork and kind of graphics on the side. You can see the unit inside, but you can never play it because as we know, they don't provide batteries, so you couldn't play it anyway. I always appreciate that here on the side, they offer a little bit of the game history. This is my arcade, at least paying some reverence to uh, you know, the lineage of these games that they're repurposing into these little cabinets. And I appreciate that because not everybody was around the arcade era like we were to know firsthand what uh, Caveman Ninja slash Joe and Mac were all about. And around back, we just have a couple of callouts to the full color screen. Of course, that removable joystick that we've seen on so many of these. And the rest is just kind of a rundown of features in several different languages. But I think that's more than enough box gazing. Why don't we get this thing cut open and check it out? Inside the package, we have our Caveman Ninja, of course, and then we have a little bit of uh, printed material. We have that flyer that's woefully outdated now, as well as some instructions that are absolutely not gonna be included in this review. Uh, so let's turn our attention then to the unit itself. The first thing I, I wanna call out, before I even talk about the gorgeous artwork, is you're not doing yourself any favors with this sticker. I mean, look, this is supposed to represent the gameplay, and not only is it probably the most boring screen on the entire NES ROM, which I assume is in this, but it doesn't show the game at all. It just shows a picture of Joe. Uh, okay, I mean, that seems an odd choice. And what this kind of reinforces to me is that, yeah, it probably is the NES ROM, which is gonna be problematic because of the year that Joe and Matt came out and the technical demands of it. But all right, let's focus on the outside of the unit first. Uh, nothing surprising here that my arcade does a gorgeous job of really vibrant decal artwork here. We see Joe and Mac there, though not named, the caveman ninjas. Uh, we see some of the characters. There's the uh, pterodactyl and the brontosaurus or diplodocus or whatever they're called these days. I've forgotten since I was a kid. Around back, we do have the volume up and down buttons with a headphone jack 
right there in the middle. Just below there, we have the single mono speaker that's rear firing. And below that, we have the battery compartment. It takes four AA batteries, or you can charge it with the five volt micro USB port that's right there below it, your choice. Doesn't recharge, but it can be externally powered. Just on the top here, there's a little Data East sticker, and there's a marquee. Now this marquee does not illuminate. It doesn't turn on any backlight or anything. And just below there, we have uh, the screen that you've seen currently covered up by this little sticker. Down below on the knee board, we have a little simulated coin door, which is also the power switch. It does illuminate. And something I've never really mentioned before, but I think I should, all these My Arcades, they have these strips of kind of rubbery, grippy tape on there, so it sticks well on the table and doesn't slide around on you. I don't know why I've never mentioned that before, but <laughs> I noticed recently I had a unit that didn't have this, and it really made a difference. So I appreciate that this has always been a feature. And then, of course, a close look at the controls themselves. Over here, we have the same A and B buttons, not labeled is A and B, but I'm sure they're A and B buttons. We have a start and a reset button. And then of course, the uh, patented My Arcade four-way D-pad with a screw-on, screw-off bat top joystick. I've seen the community is very divided on this. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, I, I appreciate that they give you the option. I've never taken the bat top off and used it as a D-pad because there's just nowhere really to put your hand. So I appreciate that they allow you to choose, but realistically, I would prefer just a better joystick in general that doesn't come off. I think they're just stuck in a rut maybe, but uh, it, it does the job I expect. All right, let's get this fake screen protector off, get some batteries in it, power it up and check out the gameplay. And there's our caveman ninja. Yep, that's exactly what, look, so here's the first thing that jumps out at me. Let's turn this up so we can hear it well. Okay, so look, it's an NES ROM and they modify it a single player, the sticker. Still says, press start to play, select for options. They didn't even use their own modified ROM image for the sticker. They just took a screenshot from the NES, which, yeah, it's it's little details like that that just bug me. But all right, let's start. All right, here are all the guys coming to steal the women out of the TP. That's the beginning. The whole premise of Joe and Max slash Caveman Ninja is that you're rescuing uh, all of your maidens from the bad guys, the bad uh, cavemen or whatever they are, right? But look, they've got to come one at a time because there's just not aren't enough sprites to do what Caveman Ninja did, which was effectively a gorgeous cartoon. It's kind of bored this maybe? Not really. Nope, you just get to wait. All right, we're just waiting. All right, I get start. I get start to abort it. Whew, thank you. All right. Yep. Yeah. There's some cavemen coming. Yeah. So, look, this is the NES, Joe and Matt Caveman Ninja. And if that's how you play Caveman Ninja, maybe. But it's such a... It's such a watered-down version of what is a late arcade... Look, this isn't Pac-Man. This isn't Dig Dug, right? This came out in 91, and it was a lot more demanding. And the NES, you know, is... It was also growing long the tooth at this point, so what you get is a later arcade game on much earlier hardware. Like it just doesn't do Caveman Ninja justice. A little power up there. And are there extra, uh, what about the extra weapons? Caveman Ninja had like seven or eight guys on the screen at once and power ups and, oh, and this is the boss. This was a full screen boss on the arcade, you know? There was a maiden up on a, uh, up on a little ledge and you were jumping up and down the ledge and the dinosaur was full screen and you were, and sometimes he would throw guys at you. Look how Spartan this is. A blue background, I guess is the biggest dinosaur they could do. And I know NES is capable of a little better than this, but that's just what the port is, I guess. I mean, if you like Caveman Ninja in the arcade, you know that it's, it's like a little cartoon. It's gorgeous. It has animation, it has humor in it. And what you get here is kind of just, oh, here's a little more variety in the background at least. Look at that, that's good. Uh, walk up on this dinosaur. Oh, there's a power up finally. Okay, we got all the way through. We never got a power up for the first boss. Just, I mean, other than it being kind of caveman based, this is a very, 
ordinary NES platformer. Kind of. Oh no! Here's a bigger dinosaur. All right, that's something. All right. I gotta shoot up at his face, maybe. I don't know. I don't seem to be doing any damage to him. I don't know. No telling. I'm just not having fun with this. Well, thankfully, I'm nearly dead. I only have one life left. So I guess it, it took pretty much all the horsepower the NES had to get this giant dinosaur on the screen because they got rid of all the backdrops and all the parallax effects. And yeah, I mean, somebody that's played this on the NES their entire life, maybe they're screaming at me and saying. There's a much better game here and you don't know how to play it, but my response to that would be, oh, there, I finally hit him in the mouth after I don't know how many times. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hit him a few times in the face. Okay. Yeah, it is doable, but you know what? It, it's not worth the effort because the presentation here is so meh that, you know, I'd much rather go and play the arcade ROM. This is one of those cases where it really, really matters. Yeah, I think, I think I've had enough. Again, here's the thing. These are arcade toys. And while you could kind of get away with things like Tetris that had releases all over the map and there's not like a definitive version, Caveman Ninja has a definitive version. It's the arcade release that came out in 1991. So the big problem, as we mentioned, and my fear at the front of this review is that this guy just does not have this NES on a chip the ability to recreate that rich, almost animated storybook kind of environment the Caveman Ninja provides. What you have here is such a pale imitation of Caveman Ninja that it's almost impossible for me to recommend it. I mean, many times during this review, I've shown you this side by side where the arcade game is on the left and the NES version is on the right. That's the NES version that's here in this little tabletop My Arcade unit. And you can see in all these comparisons that it's so diluted. The experience, the visuals, the audio, everything about this release, frankly, should not have been released in a My Arcade unit. It's almost like that Stargate that was a Defender you know, some time back. It's just frankly so bad that I wouldn't even call it Caveman Ninja. Now in this case, in its defense, this was an NES release for Caveman Ninja. And if this was your first exposure to the Joe and Mac franchise, this might be fine for you because it's what you recall, but if you're an arcade purist and you really want that experience, this one just doesn't quite scratch that itch. And I, I really can't say anyone other than just collectors that have to have them all should pick this up at all. That being said, I'm gonna award this My Arcade Micro Player Caveman Ninja two tokens out of five. There is some fun to be had, certainly, and the less you play the arcade game, the more you're liable to enjoy this tabletop version. But all things being said, there are way better ways to spend your collecting dollar than on this Caveman Ninja release from my arcade. Hey, if you enjoy looking at these little toys, let me put a link here and here of previous videos I've done covering my arcade and many more of these releases. I really hope you found something though to enjoy in this video, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>